Hey, Rashad here. All right, I got this comment that was left on a video that I did with Carl, the one where I did the interview with him. So it was this one, if you want to see it. So I re-uploaded it to my channel. But uh, yeah, so pretty much it's a pretty long comment. Before I get to the a bit of drama, but I'd like to get to show this bit before I talk about the other bits, if I end up talking about it. So, this person says that, as for what I think it's right, you are both right, but you choose to ignore each other's main differences and basically disregard them. Carl ignores Amazing Slowdown, huh? Rashad sees Carl's exercises as a distraction. So in my opinion, like I said, a series where you both try each other's main difference would be interesting to watch. Cheers. Okay. So just here a bit before he says, opposing coaches try each other's methods. So he's like trying to make a video idea where we try each other's methods, that kind of thing. Now, um, the thing that I get with a lot of my, the negative comments that I get, like the, the critical comments that I get, because, you know, I get a lot of amazing, lovely comments of people who I feel really understand where I'm coming from when it comes to song-based teaching and why I'm anti-scales. I got that from one of my commenters today from Daniel Hawk. Um, something that I think the people that don't ask me questions, but kind of tell me kind of what to do tell me what I should be doing or that I shouldn't disregard scales, but like my idea is good, however, or my ideas are good, but they don't go far enough, that kind of stuff. This, the thing that they all have in common is they've never done one lesson with me and they've never asked me one question. So that's what I find is the common problem with these people is that I don't feel like they're wanting to learn from me and why well, am I making a video about it? Because someone criticizes you and you feel strongly about something, right? So you want to use, use it as a teaching moment. Now, the person that I'm talking to might not listen, but other people out there might find it interesting. It might be on the, on the, in the middle and sort of be like, okay, I'm curious. And some people like to hear it preaching to the choir. You know, the people that already like to hear it, they just like to hear it because it's like a takedown of someone's bad criticism of you. And hopefully I will get through to this person, Tyrone, I think the name is, Tyrone Akil. Now, so what I, like, what I like to say is that how do I know this person doesn't know what they're talking about? Because they're telling me to try Carl's method, but they don't say why I should be trying it. Why should I be trying Carl's method? What is the reason? What is the benefit it's going to give me? I can sing high notes like Carl. I can sing runs better than Carl. I'm more advanced than him at that. I can do falsetto. Carl's falsetto is smoother than mine, definitely. I'll give him that. Um, we're both acoustic, acoustic players. So like, what would I be gaining? Now, why, and also secondly, why would I implement his system with my students? when they're already gaining, like they're already making all the same gains, if not more. I don't understand why I would do it. You, you sort of criticize me. I get, I'm getting criticized by Tyrone as if I haven't already made a transformation. It's like, you're forgetting. Have you not listened to my transformation? I mentioned it in the video that I did with Carl. So I'm not sure if you watched it, but you're forgetting that I did. I'm made, I've made a transformation in myself already, a massive one from being out of key to where I am now. And I didn't have to do Carl's method. So that should be the proof that it's not necessary. That's like the proof of my entire system. It's the fact that I have made this progress without having to take that step. And I didn't have it at the beginning. I didn't naturally have it. Now, if I had some kind of skill at the beginning, you could say, oh, you know, he kind of very naturally had it. So he didn't have to go through it. Maybe you could make that argument, but I didn't have it and I'm making the progress. So why would I need to do something if I've already made it? You get what I'm saying? Now it's actually, now Carl does show an interest here in Amazing Slowdown and you can tell it's the first time he's seen it and heard about it. And I have dozens of videos where I use and talk about Amazing Slowdown. 
So you can tell Kyle hasn't actually ever researched what I do. He's never actually looked into it. I've actually watched dozens of Kyle's videos. I know what he's talking about. I know the exercises he's doing. I can see them. I've seen other coaches do them. I used to do some of them earlier, back in the, like when I first started. They weren't all around. Some of the exercises have changed. I can tell they come from Brett, Brett Manning's program and um, a couple of other the famous programs because those programs weren't around when I first started. Um, so I had different exercises that I used to do. So what I did was I actually did try them out and I said, what do these do to the voice? And I noticed what they did and they, they train your range. But all I'm saying is that you don't need to train your range with those exercises. You can train them with songs. I, I cover the same skills when I'm doing song based training. I stop a student and say, you're doing it in the wrong coordination, though I never use that word. I say, you're, you're just, um, you got to do a more stretchy feeling. Or um, if you're going into falsetto, then we need to take it back down and get to the point where you're like on your, on your limit, etc. all that kind of stuff. I train everything. Everything gets done. There, there's not, nothing gets left out. If it was, I wouldn't have made my transformation if I was leaving things out. How would I have transformed? How can I sing a high C now? I wouldn't have transformed to, to get these new notes from a, my highest note was a G sharp. Look up my before and afters. I have a whole playlist of before and afters. Carl doesn't have that playlist. What other teachers have a playlist of their before and afters from 10, 15 years ago? They're all my age, approximately my age, the big coaches on my, who has them? No one. I have proof. So, you know, I get upset when you say to me, try this guy's method. It's like, but why, man? I get, I get upset because it shows that you don't understand what I'm talking about. That's what upsets me. You know, I'd love for you to come to lessons and actually see both sides. Because what you've done is you've gone and learned one way, the scale way or whatever way with these weird sounds and lip trills and blah, blah, blah. And then you've, you've already made up your mind because you've learned that stuff. And then you hear my way, but you never actually studied my way deeply. You might have watched the one video and then you dislike what I'm saying without actually looking deep into what I'm talking about. Whereas I looked deep into what all the coaches are talking about before I criticized. And not to mention, I made a massive transformation over the years. I used scales, etc., for about a half year when I first started, a year before I discarded it because I used it. You know, I thought that was the way you learn. And then I realized that it wasn't, but that took time to realize that it wasn't because results weren't happening in the ways that, I, that were like the songs that I was trying to learn. I wasn't getting those results. It wasn't working, even though I did it for months. Okay, so... There's a disconnect here when I get these kind of comments and these people don't have information from both sides. You can't watch one lecture, one slash interview kind of interview that I do here and then judge. You didn't even try a lesson. You know, I actually did a lesson with Carl. I actually paid him and did a full hour lesson with him to help me with stuff. That's how I wanted to, to try. And, you know, I was just curious what he would do. I, was, I wanted him to help me with my falsetto. Um, yeah, and then I found like that what you taught me wasn't really what I needed to use for my falsetto. I've been making progress with my falsetto and I continue to make it and I wanted to see if he had some special different thing because his falsetto was nicer, but he doesn't. His falsetto is either genetically better or um, he's just worked on it for more than I have. It wasn't, the exercises weren't anything special to change it. And that's why I speak so strongly. That's why I called it a distraction here. So here he says, here he, he says to me, apparently Rochette has tried every method out there and knows more than any successful teacher in the world, enough to say to them, all oh, you are all just teaching distractions. So this is like a, um, he's, he's trying to make it like a personal attack because he's not actually talking about my actual system. He's just trying to say, Rashad thinks he knows better than every teacher. But that is not an attack on my program. That's an attack on my personality. You're trying to call me arrogant. But what have you, what have you proved wrong? You haven't proved my transformations wrong. You haven't proved 
um, my student teacher videos. I have the whole playlist of student teacher videos where I show them get better in the matter of 20, a 20 or 40 minute lesson. I show the difference. What teachers can show you that? Transformation within one lesson. Mini transformations, of course. You can only make a limited amount of progress in one lesson, but you make progress nonetheless. All you're doing is attacking my character, trying to call me arrogant that I think I'm smarter than everyone or something like that. But you didn't attack my system. Why didn't you attack anything I said in the video? I called it a distraction because it is. And I said, why? Now, I said, because song's the goal. You practice the phrases of the song and you work on technique within those phrases. You didn't break that, you didn't rip that apart. So it is a distraction. You didn't prove to me how scales are correct. All you said that, all you said is that successful teachers, whatever successful means, I don't know what you mean by successful. Do you mean they have a lot of views on YouTube? Because that doesn't mean successful. Just because something is popular, it doesn't mean it's right. Junk, junk food is popular, it doesn't mean it's right. Smoking is popular, it doesn't mean it's right. Drinking alcohol is popular, it doesn't mean it's right. Just because something is popular doesn't make it six. It makes it successful, maybe monetary wise, commercially popular is an idea, but doesn't mean it's right. Okay. You didn't prove to me why it's right. And then here you said, oh, universities do it. Something like that. Where is it? Institutions, you're saying something like that. Um, Oh, I don't know if that was you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Everything in the traditional teaching method. Yeah. Why are you saying that tradition, all you're saying is that traditions are right. So what? What have you proved? You said traditions are right. What does that prove? You're not proving your point. You need to prove your point. Show me transformations of people that use scales other than just range. All the, all the transformations online are of people improving their range, mostly. That's the biggest obvious thing. There's still runs, vibrato, pitch accuracy, like performances, a whole performance from beginning to end. Where's the transformations that show that? A significantly different performance, at least like a verse in the chorus. Show me that. And show me what they used to do that. Where are these transformations? Where is your proof? You need some kind of proof. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's the best thing. Just because everyone goes to school, or it doesn't mean that schooling is the best thing that there is. Okay? So I would love it if instead of you telling me <clears throat> what to do, why don't you come and get lessons and actually learn from me so you can make a, a proper informed decision. There you go. Done. And you can make an informed decision. Carl has never gotten a lesson with me. Carl's never asked me how I teach the way I teach. Okay, so, you know, he didn't even know what Amazing Slowdowner is. So that shows like the difference between us. I've com You can look on my, I don't know if you can see it, but I've commented on many of his videos. Nice. Thank you for like tips that he'll give about his scale stuff and whatever. And I'll take whatever ideas I like and I figure out how to apply them using songs. That's, what, that's my main thing, that's what I do. Because abstract ideas are neither interesting to practice and the progress is hard to see if there is progress. And it misses a lot because it doesn't hit the goal always. It might hit part of the goal, maybe the range gets better, Maybe pitch gets a bit better when you're practicing scales and exercises, but it doesn't hit the main goal, the final goal, hardly ever. Okay, I know how to hit the final goal. Of course I work on technique, but I just work on it within songs. I don't just go, let's just do a bunch of technique exercises for one hour, for 10 hours of lessons. All right, so what else here? So that's what I say to you trying to tell me to learn his method. Tell you I've watched a lot of his stuff and I actually did a lesson with him. And you know, now you know that he can't say the same. And it's not that I'm trying to tell him to do that. He can do what he wants. But obviously, that's the best way to learn. 
and you can do what you want. But if you really want to understand what I'm talking about, which you obviously don't, if you want to understand it like all my students do, the ones that come and see me and hang out with me and spend a couple hours with me and actually learn and get better and feel it, go on my website and see my reviews. How many real reviews can you find like that online? They're just copy-pasted reviews of what they've actually written. They're not retyped or anything that could be fake. They're real. Look what they say. Read them. And then you try it for yourself. You're telling me you don't have $50, $20, whatever it is, $100 to spare, do a couple of lessons? Come on. Open your mind. Open your mind. I want to read a bit of this too. <clears throat> awkward at times. I don't know why people say awkward. What's awkward to watch? Because people, me, uh, two guys having a conversation, I don't see what was awkward. I feel you two disagree on certain things. Yeah, we can disagree. I think we did discuss it, but this this series is called Building Bridges. Carl, well, Carl, if you watch the rest of his videos that he does with people, with teachers, he's not arguing with them. He's trying to see their point of view. He's trying to build the bridge between him and them. That's the theme of his interview series. So I don't know if you've been watching, but I wasn't expecting him to argue. It wasn't a debate. It was him interviewing me, like the way he interviewed all the others. He had a list of questions and we went through them. That was it. Simple as that. I just happened to be involved with Carl's channel. I've watched a lot of his videos, so I know, I know about him a lot. And that might be why maybe the tone was a little bit different from other videos that he'd done with other people that maybe don't follow him as much. This seemed to me more like Rochette interviewing Carl. That might be why you thought that. And Carl being forced to agree in some way to avoid standoffish arguing. No, I didn't force anything. It, it can be standoffish arguing. What's wrong with that? He's not scared. He's a big boy. He made a whole video about me, like um, dissing me. He's not scared. You think he's scared? Come on. You're just trying to make me to look like I was violent or scary or aggressive or something like that. Just because I'm just talking. You both clearly disagree on the value of scales. And I don't get why Carl didn't defend the fact that it's not just about scales, but about what exercise you do within it and why. Well, I don't think he was trying to defend his system. He's interviewing me so he can find out about my system and his viewers can can see that he looked, this guy's open-minded and he checks out other coaches and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's kind of got their own way. That's, it wasn't his, he does, he does this in his videos. It wasn't a debate. Carl made a whole video on singing success and why it works, breaking down exercises and blah, blah, blah. But I get that he just backed down because he clearly knows R&B won't agree. Uh, no. I will agree to anything if you can show me a good enough reason to. So instead of providing his counter argument, he just said, what's the point? Let me just get this out of the way. Uh, no, we did an hour 40. That's pretty long. It's actually longer than any of his previous interviews. And he actually thanked me at the end for being very talkative and giving him lots of content. Uh, that wasn't in the video. I don't think he might edit that out. But yeah, he thanked me for being like really chatty and stuff. He liked that. Um, <clears throat> Apologies if I'm being harsh. You, you, you can, like, you don't need to apologize. Just say what you want to say. I don't want to create drama or tension, but you are. Like, why do you need to qualify it with this? Because you are. So what? It's just drama. Big deal. But I'm just saying what I feel. That's fine. Coming to this, I feel this video will be interesting because no address the is how you both agree and why you, what you teach works. Well, I did that. I did that. And... And Carl did a little bit as well. Man, I got that bit cool, cool. But I didn't completely, <clears throat> complete honesty. The main question is, why do you both choose to ignore each other and just agree? Oh, uh, we don't ignore each other because I clearly answered his question when he said, what do you think about my method? And I told him what I thought. And then I explained why. I don't get how that is ignoring each other. Carl didn't try to fight back that much, but he, he actually did. He went on about the middle ground stuff. That was him trying to find the middle ground. And I was kind of telling him, there isn't really a middle ground. I just use songs. But I use the songs to do technique. And scale, your systems use scales, etc., to do technique. And that technique is the middle ground. But I just use it within songs. That's it. <clears throat> we did talk about it. 
He, I like it. Carl showed in his video, he hasn't tried Rashid's methods. Yes, he has not tried. I'm sure he that he essentially doesn't respect Carl's method calling a distraction. Um, well, why didn't you keep that sentence equal by saying, Carl showed in his video that he hasn't tried Rashid's method, and Rashid showed in his video that he hasn't tried Carl's method, or he has tried it. Why didn't you say that? You just said, because you don't know. You don't know that I did a lesson with him. You don't know that I've watched many of his videos. And I know exactly what he's about. You don't know that I did scales for like the first year of my singing training. You don't know that I've researched online and seen all the teachers and their commonalities and the differences, or many teachers, not all of them, <clears throat> and made up my decisions and seen what's, what's not necessary and what's necessary because I've already achieved the voice that I want to achieve. And I'm still getting better, obviously, but you know what I mean? <clears throat> why do you say that? Because you don't know that. But why are you making out like I'm disrespectful? How was I disrespectful by calling it a distraction? He asked me what I thought. I told him what I thought. It's a distraction. And I told him why. Now, you can take that information and you can either learn more or you can say, oh, Rashad's just disrespectful, disrespectful, screw him. And that's what you're doing. You miss out when you're doing that. You're not learning what you can be learning by doing that. Me and Carl are already, already advanced singers. Are you an advanced singer already? You're the one missing out. Why don't you take what I have to say as well as what Carl has to say and learn? Why do you have to do a character attack? I'm not respectful. That's a character attack. You didn't say anything about my actual experience with scales or anything like that. And I sang a scale in the video that I did with him. Again, I'm not trying to create drama, oh, always with the, with the qualifiers. I'm just wondering why you guys made this not a complete honest. Uh, I was completely honest. What do you mean? Brush off your main differences. I didn't brush it off. I made a conscious decision to say uh, a strong word, distraction. I said to the man, the way you teach is moved, is distraction, is a distraction from the goal. That's a strong statement to say to someone, especially when I know him, when I've watched many of his videos and I've done a lesson with him. It's a very strong statement. How can you call that not honest? That is so honest or so straight. And I was thinking about his feelings, but I'm also thinking about my need to be honest. And then I say, why? And that's it. If someone's not going to handle it when you say to them, your system is, is um, not good enough, in my opinion, well, they're going to start crying or they're going to give a reason to, to convince you that the system is good enough. I want the reason. I want the reason. That's what matters. <clears throat> Carl is the main one to do this. r and uh, Oh, as in Carl is brushing off the differences. Okay, yeah, but again, he was interviewing me. He wanted me to talk. He was asking me questions. r and was more aggressive and even at times kind of disrespectful. How am I aggressive? by saying what I want to say, that's aggressive. Well, I can't speak with passion. I can't like raise my tone or be like, no, yes, no. What's wrong with that? It's called a discussion. But what are you doing here in this comment? <laughs> you think I'm being aggressive? Man, you think we would have talked for an hour 40 with like aggression? You call that aggression? Disrespectful. What's disrespectful? What am I being disrespectful about? I feel he basically says people in the traditional method are closed-minded and biased, yet he is the same. Uh, I'm saying they're closed-minded and biased. Yes, if they've seen what I talk about and they ignore it like it doesn't exist or brush it off, then they're closed-minded and biased. Of course, everyone's biased but then they'll be closed-minded if they see it and they ignore it. Now, I've had many teachers who all teach with scale-based because that's all that's out there. And many of them have sent me comments. One of them has even done a lesson with me. And they've said to me, wow, this is clever. Oh, this is different. Oh, this is interesting. This is unique. I've got it. I've got plenty of those comments from maybe four teachers, I think. Um, Narel from Singapore, Rebecca Vocal Athlete, and Rachel Gerard. And I can't remember the other teacher. I don't know. Christo Ferro. I don't know if he's a teacher. I think he's a teacher. One of them. But yeah, um, that, I don't call them closed-minded and biased. What? I don't expect people to be open-minded to something that they've never heard about. Like, oh, sorry, that doesn't make sense. If you don't never heard about something, 
then you're just biased to what you like. Oh, I'm not making sense now. Then my point is, um, no, like if someone sees something, I expect them to show interest because my method is interesting. But if you shut it down like you are doing, you're shutting down my method without even learning about it. Why don't you learn about it before you shut it down? That's what you're doing. You're being closed-minded. Bias, everyone's going to be biased. Yet I am the same. How am I the same? I started with scales and then I moved on and created my own system because scales was not working. Can you see that? That's how I created my system because scales failed. That rhymes. That's how it started, mate. He basically comes to the conclusion that because he's personally struggled to find a good teacher, I know I found great teachers that were very skilled as singers, but when it came to teaching me, they, they used scales and stuff like that, and it, it, did, it just did not work for me. It wasn't enough. It didn't feel right for me to pay $50 an hour to do scales for 50 minutes, almost fainting when I was doing them and just doing them at fast speeds, and I didn't get any better at songs. It didn't feel right. It wasn't good. I didn't make progress. You should be making clear progress every lesson. I knew generally through all my studies that when you spend a couple of hours, I did three hours of lessons with the person and I did like a certain amount of hours on my own. If you spend a few hours doing something, even if you spend one hour, you should notice your knowledge and your abilities increasing, no matter with the subject, whatever you're learning to do. I wasn't getting better at singing songs, so I felt something was wrong. Simple as that. Because I personally, blah, blah, blah. So, so what do you mean? That oh, other people don't have the same problem that I had. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, scales will work for a lot of people, but just didn't work for me or something? Is that what you're trying to say? That's ridiculous. My method works for everyone. Better than scales. That everything in the traditional method is wrong. Yeah, I already went over this. Um, I didn't say everything is wrong. I clearly said in this interview that I took an element of the scales training, which is where they change key, and I applied that element into my singing training. I change key, except I use phrases, not a useless scale. I never said everything in the traditional method is wrong. No. Practicing regularly, that's in the traditional method. Doing doing uh, like repetitions of things. That's I take I took that from the traditional method. I never said it was all wrong. I even said this in the video, like do you even listen? to the videos. Sometimes I don't think people listen to the videos or I think they listen to them, but they're like such with such a, the ear is looking out for particular things so they don't hear what I say properly. Apparently I've tried every method. Yeah. Do I need to try every method? Like why do I need to try every, every method? Have you tried every method? What does that mean? I reached the goal of being a professional singer. And I reached the goal of being able to teach other people to get better. Why do I need to try every method? I know my method works. Why would I have to try every method? And I know the downsides of other methods because I've done another method. And I regularly get students who've done the other methods and come and say to me, Rashad, I spent a thousand dollars over three months with um, the singing success teachers and I can't, and I still can't sing in key. You know how many of those stories I get? Not just singing success. Um, like they, they don't always tell me who they did it with, but some, it's once, sometimes they buy courses. Sometimes they do it with teachers, non-famous teachers, etc. It's the same story. I've heard it so many times from my students. At least one quarter of my students give me this story. Why do you think I created my method? It's a real problem out there. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I already talked about this. The point is you both essentially haven't tried to show these methods. Honestly, well, you're wrong. I tried this scale method and that's what got me to think something is wrong, which made me create my method. Instead of brushing it off, blah, 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 civil debate. Essentially what I'm saying, Carlos needs to address why he prefers. Yes, he, he doesn't know my method. So that's why he cannot address why he prefers his method over mine. He doesn't know my method. All he needs to do is tell me why his method is good. And I tell him why my method is good. And then we compare those two things. That's it defend his views, see what comes out of it, blah, blah, blah. You both only have, I didn't settle on common ground. Oh my God. Like I completely talked about how I train and it's nothing in common with him. He doesn't train with songs. He's only started looking at songs recently. 
looking at singers and doing song stuff with analyzing vi videos of singers because so many people have been asking him for it because people are like, okay, but how do I actually sing my favorite songs? Most amazing question that students can ask. And that's the only reason he started doing it. If you look in his years of videos, he never does anything like that. If you look at the beginning of my singing teaching videos, that's exactly what I do do. <laughs> do, -do. I used songs right from the beginning. Uh, but don't create a conclusion to your main disagreement. How could you do this? Well, people disagree and they have to walk away disagreeing because if someone doesn't want to accept what you have to say or doesn't want to try what you have to say, you're going to disagree. That's just how it is. Even if they try it, they might disagree. It's just how life is. People disagree. You don't even have to stop yours, at least if you give a chance. Well, that's exactly what I did for my first year. I gave a chance. And then I created my method over the next 10 years because that method was not working. Tons of views, blah, 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 whatever. You think I just care about lots of views, like obsession with views and subscribers. I believe it will be a great series, informative. No, the most informative thing would be for you to go get some lessons with each of us and then you can make your own comparison. And why don't you make your own videos? All of our lessons will be recorded. Carl records all of his lessons. You can put all the videos up and that'll be really informative and interesting to us. Why don't you do that? How about that? Because you're the singer who's not advanced. We're advanced. It's hard for us to, to like prove and practice in that way because already, we've already got the skills developed. The best way is to show the people that aren't developed yet and show what happens to them when they try each method, a.k.a. you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's it. That's pretty much what I got there. Um, there's so many messages there. That's an interesting feed. Have a read of that one, guys. If you want me to make more videos on it, maybe I'll do that on the other comments down there. But there's, a, there's like a gold mine there. If you like this kind of video. Okay, guys, Rashid Hayek, I'm BCNlessons.com. See you guys next time. Bye.